Thanks, Chris. It's time now for our regular look back at the day in finance with our money man, Scott Phillips, Chief Investment Officer at Motley Fool. Scott, good evening. Um, let's revisit the massive cash splash seen across New South Wales on Freedom Day. Residents splurging $100 million at retail outlets in just 24 hours. Now, we anticipated a bounce back, but to this degree... <laughs> Tomo, good evening. I don't think so, mate. Look, I think we thought people were keen to get back out to the shops, uh, hairdressers, beauty salons, a bit of retail therapy, maybe even a drink at the pub. But you only had to look at some of the vision. The people lined up at Kmart at 12.01. Of course, the pokey kicked back into life about the same time. And the pubs were pretty full yesterday evening. So I think to some degree, this is the evidence is, is literally in the viewing. Um, simply New South Wales residents were just so happy to be out of lockdown and really did go back with gusto. Fingers crossed, of course, it doesn't lead to a spike in cases, but so far so good and great for the economy. NAB's business confidence survey out today, September, a tough time for most, but a lot of optimism too. I was pretty happy with these numbers, I've got to say. The conditions were down 10 points to 5. Now, 0 is neutral, so 5 is still positive. That's a win. Um, but obviously, a decline, not great. Of course, that's where businesses were in September. The confidence numbers were actually up a full 13 points, and that's a really, really good sign. Businesses could see the lockdown ending, the sort of thing we've just been talking about. That became clear to business, and that is really positive because it means they're going to be building inventory, they're going to be hiring people, they're going to be spending in advance of the recovery they saw coming. And as I said, the good news is we've seen that recovery already. So really, really good news across the economy. Hopefully it continues. And certainly the next month's data are going to be really, really important because that is going to be the month where we see people actually out there spending, how businesses are feeling, confidence, and how they're actually seeing sales come through the door in those business conditions numbers. The Qantas share price in the red today. That's, of course, off the back of news. Australia might soon have another budget airline. Yes, Bonza, the latest one to hit the skies. Tom, I've got not enough hair left. To, I remember well the last two, three, four or five different budget airlines that tried to take on the incumbents. Of course, remember Compass Mark 1 and Mark 2. There was Ausjet, of course, and not forgetting Ansett itself. Even Virgin Blue kind of went upscale once they got rid of the other airline competitors and simply decided to join Qantas. That gives Bonza some room at the bottom end of the market, the cheaper end, the second-rate destinations, the less service destinations, and, of course, cheaper airline prices. I've got to say, though, no, no third airline has ever been able to make it work here in Australia, right back to the days of TAA and ANSET. We've been a two-airline country. I think they're going to have a really, really tough job to find themselves a sustainable third place. But, of course, Qantas shares fall in the meantime because the reality is if there is an airline price war, that hurts everybody, even if Qantas ends up winning. OK. And just before we let you go, how's Wall Street looking? Wish I could finish on a positive note, Tom. Oh, unfortunately, US futures are down about four tenths of one percent. Uh, it's been a tough week this far on the market. It might be another tough day for us here tomorrow. Scott Phillips, thank you. Thanks, Tom.